Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Fried Chicken and Croffles. Well, everyone knows that fried chicken and waffles are a killer combination, and today we're gonna take that up a notch by using croissant dough rolled in sugar and pressed into a waffle instead of your typical waffle batter. Now, it's incredibly crunchy, flaky, delicious. It's gonna change your life. And of course, we're gonna enjoy some fried chicken, a little bit of spicy hot sauce, maple syrup over the top with it. We got a lot to do. Let's get to work on our chicken. So the chicken we're using today for our fried chicken is chicken thighs, and currently these are bone in, skin on. I'm gonna get rid of the bone for the frying, but I wanted to keep the skin, and you can't really buy them skin on, bone out. So that means we just got a little bit of trimming to do. So what we're gonna do here is there's just this one bone that runs right here. So we're just gonna trim around that and underneath it and get it out of there. And just go run our, our knife right around the sides of it, peeling that meat back, and we'll slice through out to the end. This end is always gonna have a little knuckle. You can see that shiny connective tissue there. I don't care if we lose that, that's not a problem for me. So I'll take a little bit of meat off at the end just because it's got the knuckle in it as well. And then looking at our thigh now, we're gonna cut this into two pieces to be fried. So I'll go right down here in the middle. Now you've got skin on, thigh bite right there. We don't need all of this extra over here, so we'll take that off. A nice little one person portions of skin on boneless chicken thigh. See if I've left anything behind like this little piece right here. You just want to be looking out for that. Trim that off as well. There's some more of that really tough connective tissue, knuckle, whatever it is. It's not enjoyable to eat, so it's gone. That's what it is. So next thing we're going to do is prepare our buttermilk brine. Now the buttermilk brine is something this chicken's going to soak in overnight uh, to help tenderize, uh, add flavor, and make it extra juicy. So I'm going to do three quarters of a cup of our Cattleman's Grill Butcher House brine in with two quarts of buttermilk. And that's all we gotta give it. It's got salt, it's got sugar, it's got garlic and onion. So not only is the chicken being tenderized, it's also being flavored with all of these great base, fla base level flavors. Thighs go right in. We'll leave them submerged overnight. Lock them down. Well, I've got a batch of chicken that's been brining since last night, so we're gonna use that for our fried chicken today. The next step is to get it dredged. So I'm gonna start with four cups of all-purpose flour, and I'm gonna add to that two different seasonings a quarter cup each of Cattleman's Grill Lone Star brisket rub, which is just salt, pepper, roasted garlic. So there's a great savory base with some nice texture to it. The other thing we're using is the Fin and Feather by Plowboys. Now I love this rub in this application because of the lemon that's in it. Now it's got some of the same things, salt, pepper, it's actually got some onion. There's little bits of rosemary in here, but then you've got that red, which is nice from the paprika and the citrus or that lemon that just really makes things pop. A little lemon uh, pepper in with your fried chicken is always a great choice. We're gonna let a little bit of this uh, buttermilk end up over here in our dredge, just cause it, it kind of, uh, adds a few little more like cracks and crags in there. But essentially what we're going to do here is just come straight out of the buttermilk. We'll let some of that excess drip off and then press it into the flour, covering on both sides. Skin side and the opposite side as well. And press a little flour in, shake off the excess and then move it to the wire rack. 
to the flour, you know, it's filling in all these little cracks and crags that fry up nice and crispy, which is what we love about fried chicken. But to really help him get, get the most out of that, what we're gonna do is let this flour set up, this dredge set up on the chicken. I like to go at least half an hour, though you could go longer. I, I remember a restaurant that would even do this overnight, would let their chicken sit like this overnight. Um, but instead of, you know, just throwing this in the fridge or something, figured we'd have a little extra fun with it. We're gonna throw this on the smoker, super low heat, like 150 degrees. Um, it's gonna soak up with just a little bit of smoke flavor, but more importantly, it's gonna sit there and all this flour is gonna attach to the chicken. And then we've got just a tiny bit of a head start on temperature when it comes to frying. Uh, so it's gonna be a really easy frying process. All right, so let's head over to the smoker. Today we're smoking on the Yoder Smokers YS640S pellet grill. It's running at 150 degrees with hickory pellets. We'll throw this right up top. Again, really low, gentle heat going on. It's gonna get the opportunity just to soak up a little bit of smoke. It's not gonna be anything overwhelming in the end, but I will put a probe in here just to keep an eye on the temperature. I'm gonna set the timer for 30 minutes. And we'll come take a peek. So we ended up giving this chicken about 45 minutes on the smoker. If we look closer, you can see how it's kind of attached itself. We still got some dry and craggy parts, but that's great. Those are gonna crisp up real nice. We've got this oil temp right above 350 degrees. It's gonna drop a bit as we put in our chicken, but we're gonna try and maintain right around 325. Oh, and I forgot to mention, it's not actually oil. We're frying in beef tallow today. Now, if you want to, you can absolutely fry your chicken in vegetable or peanut or canola oil, whatever you have on hand. But if you really want to punch up the flavor on your fried chicken, try frying in beef tallow. It adds a ton of flavor. And chances are, if you're watching this barbecue channel, maybe you're doing some barbecue at home and saving that beef fat from your brisket trims. That stuff can all be rendered down to be used for this purpose. If not, head over to atbbq.com and pick up a tub. All right, got some good browning on that first side, so we're giving these a flip now. At this point, what we're looking to do is bring the internal temperature up to about 175 to one, yeah, 175-ish. It's kind of about 175 to 180s where the thigh meat gets really silky smooth. All right, we are right in that sweet spot, about 175 on these thinner ones right here. We're gonna pull those out. Let's transfer them over to the wire rack so they don't get soggy. Let some of that oil drip off. And we're just going to keep loading this oil up. Ooh, got, got a little hot oil on the hand there. And we'll keep rotating these through until we get through all eight of them. So with the chicken getting close to finishing up, it's time to prep the croffles. And what we're doing here is we're taking a fully proofed, even a little overproofed, uh, raw croissant. This actually came from Chef Britt at Reverie. Uh, she made these, these croissants that we're gonna be cooking up today. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna take these and just roll them around in some smoked turbinado sugar and then transfer them over here. So as much as those are proofed and then overproofed, they spread uh, to kind of get maximum coverage. No need to add any fat, any butter, any spray or anything. This is non-stick already, but there's a ton of butter in here. So this is gonna crisp up really nicely. Look at that beautiful golden brown. That sugar's caramelized to the outside. This should be kind of cooked all the way through, but still a little bit chewy on the inside and then nice and crunchy on the surface. Now, one thing we gotta have on top is a little bit of hot sauce maple syrup, but you guys can mix this as you like or keep it separate or whatever, but just gonna do some real maple syrup with just a little dash of our Scorpion anti-gravity. This stuff's got some kick to it. Oh, it's hot. Oh, it's hot. Oh, okay, let's do this. We'll plate one up now. Start with our waffle. 
Top it off with some chicken. A little bit of our spicy maple syrup. A little dusting of powdered sugar. That's it. Oh, that's juicy. Yeah, it is. Listen to the crunch in that crawfle. Chicken's looking super juicy. Let's have a bite of it all together. Oh, man. Salty and sweet balance is insane. Mm. The maple syrup, but even more than that, the sugar crust on our crawfle is incredible. You can almost hear that crunch, I'm sure, because we've caramelized all that sugar to the outside of the croissant. And then as the butter leaks out of the croissant in the waffle iron, it fries itself inside the waffle iron. Just incredible. It's gonna ruin regular waffles for me forever. But the fried chicken, man, that is juicy. It's got just the right amount of crunch on it. Mm. Picking up on all those flavors. We laid down a great base with that buttermilk brine just all around. And then it's salty, it's peppery, just a hint of that citrus. I love every last bit of that. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.